Buffalo Nation. I'm here with my good friend and colleague, Jeremy Pettis. And today we're going to talk about how you evaluate your diabetes regimen. And it's a great time to do it when we're all quarantined. These are important evaluations that we should do every three, four months, actually, not just when you're stuck at home for two months. So first we're going to talk about type 1 diabetes, then we're going to talk about type 2 diabetes. Jeremy? Yeah, so real quick, you know, we got a lot of questions about this. People are at home, they're eating different, they're exercising different, blood sugars are probably all over the place. Great time of, to check in and, and kind of fine tune your diabetes. So with type 1, we're going to start with your, your basal dose. And that can be the, the, the amount of basal insulin you take from an injection, um, or it could be through your pump. But starting there is a really good way um, to kind of figure out where the ground floor is. Once you get that figured out, it doesn't change too much, then you can move on to carb ratios and sensitivity factors and things like that. So lesson one with basal rates is what is the point of a basal rate or a basal dose? And it's to keep your blood sugar flat. So if you go to bed at 150, you should wake up around 150 or so, give or take 30 points. It's hard to do much better than that. Um, Steve, you wanna give me your trick question now? Yeah, what if you go to bed at 250 milligrams per deciliter and you wake up about 250 milligrams? Do you need a higher basal rate for that? Yeah, that's a great trick question, Steve. So <laughs> the answer is uh, no. So you're going to bed at 250, you're waking up at 250, your blood sugar's flat. So your basal, it's doing its job. It's just that you're going to bed high, so you need to take more you know, mealtime insulin or whatever. So instead of going to bed at 250, you go to bed at 150, and then your basal just kind of keeps you there. So how do you tell patients, Steve, to test their basal rate overnight to figure out if they need more or less? Yeah, this is really important to do. Um, you try to have an early dinner, six o'clock. You make sure your post-meal blood sugar is under uh, good control and that your blood sugars are steady. Now, if you're on a continuous glucose monitor, uh, you've got that trend arrow that tells you you're steady. If you don't have a continuous glucose monitor, then you need to prick your finger a little bit more during these tests, but the information you get is gonna be complete, very valuable. So then you don't eat anything all night long and you wake up in the morning, check your blood sugar. And some people, we try to get them to sleep in or not eat for a while so you can really test to see if that basal rate or basal dose is keeping you flat. Yeah, and, you know, do this multiple times to see if there's a pattern. But if you notice that you consistently, for example, um, are going to bed at 150 and you're waking up at 250, well, that's, that means you're not getting enough basal insulin. And if you check in with your provider, you can increase your injection you know, by one unit and try it again. Or you can increase your basal rate by maybe 0 0.05 or 0.1 and kind of keep doing it until you get to a place that you feel pretty confident that if you go to bed at a flat number that you're going to wake up, you know, with a good number. And you, you mentioned Steve, but you know, there's all kinds of variables in diabetes. So you don't want to pick a night when you're already going high or low, or you exercise late or you stayed up late, pick kind of a, a, a typical night where you're, you're cruising, your blood sugar is flat. And there's never been a time to do it when the now, when we're sitting at home, and we're quarantined and we can really focus in on our own regimen. Jeremy, let's talk about the insulin sensitivity factor, otherwise known as the correction factor. Yeah, so first of all, what is that? And that is a ratio of how much one unit of insulin will drop your blood sugar. So a typical type one number might be 50 points, a correction factor of 50. Meaning if you take one unit of insulin, it'll drop your blood sugar by 50 points. And you can test this, just like testing basal rates, so what you do is you pick a time when your blood sugar is high, let's say it's 200, you take a unit of insulin, and then you just wait and watch at least two hours or so to see how far your blood sugar has come down. And that gives you an idea of what your correction factor is. Again, just, do this multiple times to give you an idea. Yeah, and I was just going to emphasize again, you got you to gotta make sure you're in steady state, that your blood sugars are flat, <clears throat> you're not going to be eating, you don't, you know, you're not going to be exercising for several hours before and after. And that's the best way to test it. And that, that information is so valuable because we use that all the time mm -hmm. to correct our blood sugars when they're high. Okay, next, the famous insulin to carbohydrate ratio. Yes, Steve, do you wanna tell us what that is? No, I want you to. <laughs> <laughs> the carb ratio is 
basically how many grams of carbohydrate one unit of insulin will cover. So if your carb ratio is 10, that means that one unit of insulin will cover 10 grams of carbohydrate. And you can test this. A good way of doing this is get a packaged meal that has the, the number of carbs exactly written on there. So it's you know 40 grams of carbs. And you use your carb ratio to bolus for that meal. So if you're one to 10, eating 40 grams of carbs, that'd be four units of insulin you take. Take it 20 minutes or so before you eat. And then you wanna look at what your blood sugar does two hours after you eat. And the best that you can do is keeping that two hour uh, blood sugar about 50 points or so higher from where you started. Meaning, if you start at 100 and you go up to 150, that's good. You know, everybody's gonna have some, some rise in their blood sugars. You can't just keep your blood sugars completely flat all the time, and it's, it's really, really hard. Um, but if you notice that you start a meal at 100 and you bolus for those amount of carbs and you're going to 280 every time, well, then you might need to make your carb ratio a little bit more aggressive. Yeah, I just want to emphasize too that, you know, there is a lot of variability. You should do it more than once. The timing of the insulin is key. We know that if you take your insulin at the time of the meal, you're going to bounce up a lot higher than if you took it 20 minutes before. So it's it's kind of a, a, a really good exercise to not only uh, look at the timing of the insulin, but also how to control your blood sugar depending on how many carbs. Just think about it. Counting carbs is is kind of a crapshoot, uh, you know, and and so you know the timing of the insulin is variable, uh, and so you got to have that insulin to carb ratio correct. Otherwise, you're it's not going to really be that helpful. Yeah. So, and the time of day, Steve. You know, so I know you love your Steve. Steve, what do you call them? Your Egg McEdelmans that you have in the morning. Uh, the Egg McEdelmans. Yeah. So if you have your Egg McEdelman in the morning versus having it at night you probably need way more insulin for that same exact meal in the morning when you're more insulin resistant. So it's another thing that you can play with. Your card ratio might be different depending on the time of day. Yeah, it can get pretty sophisticated. Absolutely. Okay, let's talk about type twos. For many of you type twos on multiple daily injections and a pump, you know, a lot of those rules apply to you. Um, you don't have to lean back when I'm talking about type twos, Jeremy, pay attention. Um, I'm leaning in. <laughs> um, now, many of you type twos are using a CGM, either the Dexcom or the Libre, and that's awesome, but it's probably a minority of you. You gotta get out your glucose meter, get off the cobwebs, get out those expired strips, they're still good, uh, and prick your finger a lot more for these tests, and it'll pay off. So basically, two areas. One is how you do overnight. We call this paired testing. Friday night, Saturday morning. Monday night, Tuesday morning. Those deltas are really important. And as Jeremy said earlier, they should be pretty close. And even if you go to bed high and you wake up the same highness, uh, that's important information that you have to work on to go to bed at a better blood sugar. The only other area that you, you really have any control over is looking at your pre and post meal blood sugars. Uh, you know, as Jeremy says, you cannot adjust the dose of your oral pills. You can't adjust the dose of your injectable GLP-1s like Trulicity, Bidurion, Ozembic. I love those commercials. Rebelsis. Um, yeah, you can't adjust those, and you should not adjust those. But you want to tell your caregiver what's happening overnight and how high you're bunch, bunching, uh, rising after meals. Jeremy? And so the one thing that you can adjust in your diabetes life, though, is your, is your lifestyle. Yeah. That's always something we shouldn't forget about that people can address, especially again now when maybe you have a little bit more time to focus on your health. So what you're doing with your diet, you know, how many calories you're eating, you know, are you trying to go more low carb? Are you doing intermittent fasting? You know, some kind of um, mindful plan for your diet is important, as well as exercise. You know, it's easy, it's much easier now um, to be a couch potato, basically. So you have to make yourself get up, move every day. We always recommend at least 30 minutes a day, five days a week. Doesn't mean you have to put on spandex and go to some fancy gym, just walk around the block, do something, move um, your body. It really makes a difference in terms of your blood sugar control. Fancy gyms are closed, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Nation, I just wanna say uh, quickly that you can go to the TCOID website. We have different Facebook groups. If you go under the Living Library of Resources, there's a blog there. Feel free to ask Jeremy and myself uh, any questions. So with that, uh, we say, you know, be healthy, 
and have fun evaluating your diabetes regimen. If it's no good, fire your doctor. No, I'm kidding. All right. So long, Nation. <laughs>